here's something we haven't seen in a while, right? <laughs> Some good news. Positive week for stocks. We like it. The Dow, NASDAQ, S&P 500 all higher after a wild, it was a very, well, wild and volatile week of trading. It's all coming with China now allowing U.S. rice imports for the very first time ever. Maybe a bit of a thaw, perhaps, in those trade tensions? Could that actually help get stocks back on track as we head into the new year? We are asking our market watchers right now for you. Melissa Armo, Alan Nuckman, and Jim LeCamp. Good to see you all. Jim, starting with you, what are you thinking? I mean, it's been really volatile and pretty scary for some people, uh, but is it going to change come January? Because let's not forget the economic fundamentals are pretty good. Economic fundamentals are pretty good. Good to see you, Trish. Uh, the look, loan officer surveys uh, at the banks say that uh, things are going pretty smoothly there. Uh, retail spending is on the upswing after many years of doing nothing. Uh, business spending is still pretty good. Leading and, la and coincident economic indicators all pretty strong. So the economy is doing pretty good. We're going to probably have a 2.4% GDP quarter, which is not as strong as the first six months, but it's still a pretty good quarter. And we are going to have the end of tax selling, uh, which is uh, now officially, well, we have maybe another half day, but it's pretty much over now. Uh, and Do you actually so, think that that's that, one of the big reasons we've seen some of this downside? Yeah, so listen, uh, we had all these stocks that made these big multi-year moves, whether it's Facebook, Apple, Amazon, I mean, you can name them all, uh, that had these really big multi-year moves. People held them over two or three years, and then they finally sold them this year. So they were incurring massive capital gains at a time where the market really wasn't doing anything. So you had a lot of tax selling to offset those gains. Now you overlay that with a Fed that pretty much spit the bit in many people's <laughs> eyes uh, when, they, when they came out. Uh, uh, for the uh, December meeting and the press conference, which didn't help either. You have what seems to be a presidency that's even more unpredictable than we thought in the first place. And it makes and people worried. Okay. And so that's why you're seeing that fall. So let me get over tax, to Alan yeah. for a second, though, because uh, Jim just brought up the Fed. And, you know, right. I, here's what I would say about that. It, sometimes I think there's too much of a, a concern or a focus on the Fed when there should actually be a bigger concern on the Democrats coming into the House. Because, look, if our economy is strong and we're doing well. I, I think we can handle a quarter point. I mean, it may not be right. ideal, right? But we can handle it. What I don't think that we can handle is Maxine Waters going after all the banks, as she's promised she will. Uh, it, we don't want to hear more of this rhetoric from the likes of Nancy Pelosi. And we don't want more investigations that are on their road to nowhere. But yet that is what we're going to get. So could the change in House leadership, in your view, Alan, be affecting the markets? Well, anything's possible. I focus more on price than politics, which is hard to do these days. I really like the price action this week. We made new lows and had, we had a higher weekly close. So that's a positive. And we're 7% off that bottom. To get back to interest rates, we're still at extremely, extremely low levels at 2.5%. So, you know, yes, we so have So you're not that freaked up, out by the, you know, quarter point move here, quarter point there? No, not at all. And if you okay. look into the future, that's what these markets on my shoulder do. There are no rate hikes until all of 2019. So I think that issue can be we set aside and we can focus on what's important, earnings growth, and we're looking for about a 13% earnings growth, which would be the fifth quarter in a row of double digits earnings growth coming up here So who very wants soon. to complain about that? I mean, Melissa, this is good stuff, right? I mean, it, there's a lot of fundamental economic growth going on. It looks like we're going to continue to see a rise in quarterly earnings. So why is everybody freaking out? Everyone's freaking out probably because of the reasons that you mentioned, Trish. On your show last night, you talked about it. The Democrats are taking over the House in January. So are they going to get rid of the tax cuts that are in place for corporations? Is there going to be more regulation? And not only that, are they going to attempt to impeach Trump? And I think the market is scared about that. Now, I still am bullish on the market for 2019, but you've seen a lot of selling for many, many reasons. And part of it is what you had mentioned on your show last night. I definitely think that people are either taking profits or selling out of their losers because they don't know what to anticipate with 2019. Long term, I do believe the market makes brand new all-time highs again, but we're, we're staging a late rally here. I call it a New Year's Eve rally. I thought we'd have this, but we fell off so much in the last two weeks that we're not going to even come back neutral before where we started and opened on the year, which was about 24,800 of the Dow. We were about 23,000 around today. We're, I don't, we're not going to make it in a half day. The market's right. trying, but All we're right. really running out of well, time. I gotta 
gotta, I gotta commend you for watching the show. Thank you so much, and for agreeing with my opinion. I do think that that's gonna have an effect on things, even bigger than the Fed. Anyway, Melissa, good to see you. Thank you so much, good Jim. Happy Alan, New Year. Always a pleasure. Happy New Year. Blizzards, flooding, Thank freezing you. rain—you name it, it's all out there. We're gonna catch you up on this crazy weather. See you here.